know it's going to be recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, um, happy Friday and thanks for joining another session of Azure Power Lunch today. We have uh, from our uh, partner in Azure, NetApp, they're going to, for uh, Annie and uh, Chris Cochran, they're going to talk about Azure NetApp files. So go ahead, uh, Annie and Chris, floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. And may I ask, can you see my screen? Is it being presenting? Yes. Fantastic. Well, let me start here. Um, it is Good Friday, so uh, I think everyone should be excited about that. Uh, with me, I'm Chris Cochran, the Azure Director for the South Central and specializing around the oil and gas sector as well. And uh, along with me is Annie Zara, our cloud, uh, excuse me, cloud architect, um, who will be joining me and actually giving you a preview into the Azure portal, uh, Azure NetApp Files. We'll refer to that uh, if from this point forward as ANF, if I may. Uh, Azure NetApp Files. Saw some familiar names on the call list, which will be good to, to kind of get reacquainted with. Um, let's just talk about ANF uh, in general. Tad Brockaway uh, gave the announcement on the 28th about um, Azure NetApp Files. He was actually with us last week as, uh, during our sales kickoff in San Diego. As a matter of fact, and I had a separate breakout session with him. On our main stage, not only did he uh, tout the fact that we were GA and, and the receptivity has been pretty amazing. But he said this, and, and I cornered him right after it. He said, this is better than I could have expected or planned. And I'll, I'll kind of talk to what that means in just a few minutes. Uh, Azure NetApp Files, we have the general availability announcement for any customers that, that do need that, internal or externals. And then we also have a video overview of ANF. And uh, it's a very, very powerful uh, product and tool that's serviced out of uh, the Azure portal. So we traditionally like to start a conversation with the customer and uh, Microsoft folks and, and other uh, our partners to explain what it's not. This is not a NetApp product any longer. We, we underpin it, of course. Our technology is there in the hardware and the software attributes. As you know, we have a large estate footprint globally for customers and then some large estates uh, across some very specific sectors. So when this product is uh, spoke of, we, we NetApp, we succinctly say this is an Azure product, uh, a Microsoft product. Um, it is not a marketplace offering. It's no third party licensing or other. What it truly is, is a first party service. It's a managed through the Azure portal, managed and built through Microsoft. And what it is, is a very durable enterprise grade technology. It does happen to be built upon NetApp technologies of Flash and our operating systems. It comes in and services uh, across three tiers. There's a standard tier, which we'll show, a, premier, a premium tier and an ultra tier. And again, just to kind of reiterate, um, and, and when I'm talking with your customers or our customers in general, we do remind them that it's fully built, build. it's a metered service managed and supported through Microsoft. So even so far as if there's a technical related issue, we ask that customer to open a support ticket through uh, the Microsoft service portal. Okay, I'll just keep moving through this information. If you happen to have any questions, please feel free to just chime those right in. So the first customer, or excuse me, the first thing that a customer will typically ask is what do I use it for? So what we don't typically go is to, it's not a blob type of storage. It's not a low end type of storage technology. It is an enterprise grade type of performant tier. We have a standard tier, the premium tier and the ultra tier. And some areas that it works very, very well with is enterprise grade applications. So in the middle of the world, we see databases, your SAPs, your Oracles, your SQL database apps. Those are paramount. And all of those testing that we've received to date has been incredibly positive from the performance of what they're receiving in the Azure NetApp files uh product as compared to what they would receive on prem and there's some examples i'll show in just a couple moments other areas is devops analytics uh, ai bi you know everything is really 
uh, wide open as far as you look at uh, the Azure NetApp files as that type of servicing tool. Uh, we've also branched into some high performance compute environments, uh, seismic, uh, geospatial with the oil and gas sector, with some of those providers such as uh, Schlumberger uh, on their Eclipse product, Petrel, uh, as well as uh, Halliburton Landmark. And um, we also work with the Emerson Paradigm applications. So those are highly intensive storage related products. Other areas, um, web-based apps, um, we're, we're branching into discussions with media and entertainment around media onboarding, and then also on security medias as well. So just a whole host in the gamut that we span uh, as we service for Azure NetApp files for workloads. And I'll briskly move through this just so we can get to a demo here that Annie will provide us in just a couple of minutes. And the demo really is just a setup and convenience. So there are multiple services inside of Azure, and there's Azure Files, Azure NetApp Files, and then Azure Disk. What I want to just really delineate here is just some of the specific areas so you can have a mind's eye view of what some of the performance capabilities, the capacities, um, how your Active Directory is associated, the protocol support, NFS and SMB support, and then often the, the data protections for snapshot and backupping. We will have a backup tool online uh, within the Azure uh, NetApp files in about the late summer time frame. Oftentimes customers are looking for those, those apps that are prepared to go lift and shift. We have great workload uh, intensity there, and uh, that oftentimes gives the customer an opportunity to come right in for testing. Um, if the customer has an enterprise agreement and an Azure commit, these being billed against those uh, do uh, build ACR and uh, are applied towards those commits. So just as an FYI. Let me pause there and see if there's any questions before we move on. Okay. Some people say, okay, great. Tell me about ANF and uh, who's using it. So we've put together a snapshot. This is uh, not the entire portfolio, but this is almost the who's who list of uh, some of the customers that are on board. Of the 233, there's about 3.7 petabytes deployed this morning uh, globally. Uh, that number is growing uh, in about 20 whitelists a day globally and on boards average about between 15 and 20 on a daily basis. So that is, uh, this is a very hot service, but you can see uh, from a referencing standpoint, we're starting to show um, some of the largest top five, top 10 customers of the top uh, Fortune 500. Um, so we have uh, a lot of uh, interest and demand and then in addition to that, we are building some uh, use cases and referenceable customers um, since the service is now active and, and, and uh, GA. So uh, to begin the process or the next steps and keeping with our time here this morning, um, we will continue to follow the Microsoft process to give white glove on boards. And that process as defined by Microsoft is we will whitelist all customers. So to do that, literally, you would contact myself and I will work with you to whitelist the subscription ID. We'll pick the data center that they choose, whether it be South Central, Central, East, West, Europe, Northern Europe, et cetera. Uh, we can pick that those locations and then we'll onboard them. The thing that has worked very, very well is to get on the phone for about a 15 to 30 minute discussion with the customer to take them through uh, setting up and onboarding. And with that, I'm actually going to have Annie, if I can uh, share the screen, she'll take you through that process that uh, has been working out very well. Annie, I'm going to bring this over to you. There we go. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me okay? Gotcha. Perfect. Uh, really quick, Chris, before I jump into the demo, since we have a technical crowd on the phone, I wanted to cover the architecture. So this is just a quick architecture slide really to show you that down here, these are our bare metal servers uh, in the Azure data center. 
And this purple path just represents the data path. So a customer would come in here, they would deploy a volume and just know that uh, we are deploying that directly into their VNet. So there's no public endpoint. And you will hear Tad Brockway or um, Andrew Chen on the Microsoft side talk about how this is a key differentiator for our service. This network overlay directly into Azure Software Defined Network is just kind of unlike anything we've seen before. And that's actually um, one of the biggest reasons we see the performance that we do out of the service. So this is just, I wanted to touch on this really quick um, and really highlight the point of this tight integration with Azure's network. We're using VNet injection to overlay the service into Azure's network and uh, all resources are gonna be uh, private, private addresses. Let me close out of that and jump straight into our demo. So if I go up here and I type NetApp, this is nice for customers to see sometimes because it helps them understand that Azure NetApp Files is a native Microsoft offering listed directly under services as opposed to anything we have available in the marketplace. So after we click into our Azure NetApp Files blade, there are really three key steps uh, to get yourself up and running with the service. And the first step Hi. is going- Annie, we're just yes. seeing our architecture diagram. Yeah, did you advance? Sorry about that. <laughs> and you should see it now. There we go. There's the link. Okay, yeah. So I was just, uh, when I was talking about this NetApp piece, I was pointing out that we'll see Azure NetApp files listed directly under the services blade as opposed to any marketplace offering that NetApp has uh, available today. So after I've clicked into that, we are in the Azure NetApp Files service blade, and there are three key steps to really take to get yourself up and running with the service. And the first step would be to create a Azure NetApp Files storage account. So if I click Add Account, we'll give our account a name. We'll choose the subscription that Chris was mentioning has been whitelisted and onboarded here. We'll choose a resource group, and then we'll choose a location. So today we are available in East US, North Europe, South Central US, West Europe, and West US 2. And very soon we will have East US 2 and Central, I believe, Chris. Please correct me if I'm missing any. Uh, you are correct. Okay, excellent. So we'll create one of those accounts. I already have one created, so I will click into my account. And the next step will be to create a capacity pool. So the capacity pool is a logical claim to space. It's not a addressable resource or anything like that, but basically we'll go in here, we'll give our pool a name, and this is where we will choose our service levels. So we have three service levels, standard, premium, and ultra. So small, medium, large workloads, you can think of it. Um, to get into the technical details of it, a standard uh, performance level will give you up to 60 megabytes per second of throughput per terabyte provisioned at the volume level. Premium will give you 64 megabytes per second of throughput per terabyte provision at the volume level. And Ultra will give you 128 megabytes per second of throughput, again, uh, per terabyte the volume is provisioned against. So I have a standard capacity pool already created in here. So I'll click into my capacity pool. And the next big step is going to be to create our volume. So if I click into the volumes blade, let me go in here and add volume. I'll give my volume a name. We'll see available quota here. This is referring to the available space left in the capacity pool that I'm provisioning the volume against. Uh, we support a minimum of 100 gig volume size up to 92 terabytes. So here I'll, I'll leave it at 100 gigs. This is where we'll choose a VNet. And we see that this subnet auto-populated. The reason it does that is because in order for us to deploy a volume into a certain subnet, we need to delegate that subnet to our resource provider. So that's gonna be microsoft.netapp forward slash volumes and the subnet delegation that's typical to um, all other VNet injected services from my understanding. On the next blade, we'll choose our protocol. So today we support NFS version three with NFS version four on our plan of intent um, and SMB version three. So to cover the SMB piece really quick, today we support bring your own Active Directory or classic Active Directory. We do not integrate with Azure Active Directory. 
And in order to set up this configuration, there is actually a blade that I will circle back to and show you on the on the Azure NetApp file storage account that we can go and set our Active Directory connection. And from down here, this will auto populate to to that Active Directory that we've already established connection to. But let me go back to NFS so we can create a volume. So we'll give this a file path. Uh, we generate a mount command for you. So this file path is just going to be the local directory we'll mount that file server to. And then at the bottom, you'll see export policies listed. This, because we do not support NetApp, uh, I'm sorry, we do not support security groups on this subnet that's been delegated. We tell customers, hey, we have export policies available. You can lock down the volume to read write access to certain explicit IP addresses or a range of IP addresses. Next, um, you can choose Azure tags if you're tagging in your environment and then we'll do review and create. This will run a validation and then it will run a deployment. But while that's deploying, for the sake of time, I'm gonna jump back over to my blade and cheat a little bit to make sure we cover everything. Active Directory Connections. This is where customers go in and establish connectivity to their Active Directory. So they'll put in um, DNS IP, the, the domain name, the um, computer account prefix that they want, the OU if they want to specify a specific OU within Active Directory for this computer account to go and to go and sit in, and then credentials. Most customers will use service accounts to pass credentials to this. Some use admin accounts. It, it does not matter. NetApp is not storing these credentials, or I'm sorry, Microsoft is not storing these credentials. And it looks like my volume was able to successfully deploy. So let me go and click into this volume. And we will see that we have the ability to dynamically resize this volume. You can also dynamically resize your pool. If I click down here, um, we can edit export policies after the fact as well. And then we have snapshots. Um, space efficient snapshots they can take against the volume. Right now, this is a manual process, meaning they have to manually snap against the volume. Very soon in the service, we'll be releasing snapshot policies to allow customers to, uh, to apply policies and schedules to snapshots. And next, just to quickly cover metrics. So we are integrated with Azure Monitor. So customers can go in here today and set metrics and alerts uh, against the volume. You'll, if you get a chance to explore the service, you'll see the kind of metrics we're providing, latency, IO, uh, logical size, things like that. And then lastly, we'll see mount instructions available um, down to the specific mount command to, to go and mount this on your Linux host. So I ran through that very quickly, Chris. Did I miss anything? No, very well done. Thank you. Um, can we take any questions if anyone has any at this point? So Chris, um, this is Naveed. I just want to clarify. So there is no NetApp licensing required. I mean, this is basically all through Azure and it will consume. I mean, it will consume from the commit or if you are doing pay as you go. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, when we have the conversation with the customer, that's how we specify it. Uh, Mr. Customer, you'll access this through the, uh, the Azure portal and it will be billed against your uh, monetary commit, correct? Okay, thank you. N NetApp has, uh, has no participation in any of the billing discussion with the customer. And if they have already NetApp users, so it's, I mean, it's just they are already NetApp users. It doesn't impact their ability to use this. Um, yes and no. Uh, we have tool sets that will allow them to begin bringing their migration of the data into Azure NetApp files. And, and if inherently they have a NetApp uh, estate, we can use some of those on-prem tools. However, if they have a competitive landscape, such as uh, any other fill in your storage of, of choice, right? HP, Dell, EMC, other, um, we can migrate that data in as well. There's, there's no impact. As we're doing those migrations and we're, we're having those communications, traditionally the customer will ask us for recommendations to migrations. 
uh, or a migration tool, we have a product called CloudSync. And if if the customer is migrating into ANF uh, NetApp, we can provide them that tool at no cost. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. Thanks. And then Chris, I just pulled this up really quick because we are mm -hmm. talking to a technical crowd on the phone. Um, mm -hmm. Our team and Microsoft's team has done a phenomenal job uh, documenting everything down to concepts, quick guides, even FAQs. Um, as a person who is a fellow engineer, I know I like to inquire, find out how things are working. Um, this is this is the landing page to do so. Almost 90% of technical questions I get, we have an answer for somewhere in here. Um, so if you get a chance to work with the product and you find yourself stuck anywhere, uh, you know, please take a look. It's very well documented for the most part. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any, any current ties to auditing or plans for auditing? Do you mean like file level auditing? Uh, I mean like, you know, uh, auditing in, in terms of capturing the audit logs and, and Azure auditing. So, so yeah, you know, connectivity information, access information, that type of thing. For the for the most part, we yeah, we should see some of these operations logged in activity log on uh, various resources throughout. So this is the volume. I'm sorry. This is the storage account activity log. If I go into capacity pools, we'll have that same blade available. Is that what you're referring to? No. <laughs> Steven, can you provide more detail, man? What? Um... Yeah, so I'm I'm talking about actually cap being able to capture the audit logs to uh, you know an OMS workspace to be able to go in there and 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 query the audit logs. Uh, okay, so today we do not have that available. I've had a couple of customers actually ask that, so it's been raised to engineering. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's 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 definitely been bubbled up to the right people. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, and Stephen, to that point, we are fielding requirements, um, things that, that customers are uh, requesting on the roadmap. And we're using the semester, the Microsoft semester uh, methodology for adding and prioritizing those. Uh, we, we're right now in the midst of a semester and that under Andrew Chen's guidance and Prashant Desai on our side. So those types of feedback, if you could just send me an email with that request, we'll make sure that A, number one, it's either added or on the list, and then we'll come back to uh, the, the folks and we can say, you know, hey, it's been added and, you know, it would fall into one, two, three, four semester. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, please bring those that, that feedback uh, into uh, into us so we can get it into the hands of the Andrew Chins of the world, okay? It, I have another question regarding throughput. Uh, I mentioned uh, premium and um, other standard levels and all. Uh, those are all based on express route or uh, a VPN or um, how much variation do, you, do we get? So, all of this traffic as it relates to Azure NetApp files and the deployment of these volumes is traversing Azure's network. Mm -hmm. So this is the throughput. Srini, this is the disk throughput. This has no uh, reference to if you're using Express Route oh. because that is the pipe bandwidth. This is the disk throughput. So you, uh, I mean, that's, strictly how much throughput can this provide. Got it, got it. Yeah. And, and it'll always vary, right, depending on what the customer's use case is, how they're going to be mounting these volumes. Um, so so that will vary, but, but thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Wait, how are you finding the customers mounting the volumes? Is it from IaaS VMs? So, Good question. It usually depends on the specific use case, but yes, I've seen a lot going and mounting to IaaS instances. I have some customers that aren't necessarily concerned about the latency of mounting back on prem for whatever reason, for because maybe their use case doesn't, you know, isn't sensitive to that latency, but they will establish an express route connection, go and mount and back on prem as well. Hey guys, what are the plans for cross-region replication and backup? 
So cross-region replication and backup are on our plan of intent. And like Chris mentioned, we are following this uh, Microsoft's methodology of semester planning. So currently we are in that uh, kind of black mode of semester planning. So when that is finished in the next few weeks, we'll have a tighter time frame around when those two features will be released. But as of now, I can definitely say engineering is well aware of those two features. We're just trying to figure out in which quarter we will um, implement into the service. And, and to that point, Caleb, that um, if we have a, a few customers that are interested in preview, you know, a, an early preview of the backup, we've got a few customers that are actually testing it right now, and we can bring that request forward and see if that would be approved. Thanks. You bet. Any other questions? Um, I'll just share our contact information one additional time. If you want to take a quick screenshot, feel free. Um, Andy and I will be available to work with you um, across any um, requirements, requests, uh, things that we can help you with. Um, please let us know. And um, right now, as the service is, is whitelisted, there's, or excuse me, as it's been GA'd, there's several additional announcements that will be taking place that you'll see filtering in, A, on the NetApp side, B, on the Microsoft side, um, Ready, Inspire are coming up, so you'll probably see a big splash there from us as well. Great. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind, can you see me, uh, send me a kind of uh, a version which is available for public distribution? The presentation I'm talking about. Yes, I will. I sure Thank will. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great questions. Thank you. So everyone. with that, we, yeah, we wanted to stay within that 30 minute window of time that was allocated for this type of discussion. Uh, feel free to ring us, uh, email us, and uh, Annie and I will be available to, to assist as needed. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Annie. Thank you for the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and see you next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Have a great Friday, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.